Hello, everyone. It's me, Mirtha Michelle, the host of The Fourth Wave. If you don't know who I am, I am a best selling author and poet. I am your host and co founder of The Fourth Wave, and I'm here alongside my friend and co founder, Jamie Barada. Jamie is an entertainment and fashion attorney and represents some of your favorite artists and brands. Hi, guys. Welcome to The Fourth Wave. Feminism has been historically known to move in waves, and we are currently entering the fourth wave of feminism. Like all waves, the fourth wave is a human rights movement and advocates for women's equality. But what defines this wave? Well, the role that technology plays in promoting it. From hashtag activism to the digital forums that create community and foster debate. And we hope to do just that here by aiming to inspire, empower, inform, and celebrate the woman of today. Now, on this podcast, we really want to discuss something that I know is so important to so many women, relationships. And in this particular podcast, we want to get into five healthy ways of how to get over a breakup. We've all been there. And Jamie and I want to touch on five ways that have helped us in the past to move on from your ex and do the most important thing ever, which is Establishing a relationship with yourself. Now, Jamie, what was one thing that you feel that helped you move on from your last breakup? Yeah, I think for like for me and probably for most of us, it's so hard to just get your mind off of the breakup and you're constantly, you know, obsessing over it, trying to think about what you could have done to make it go dif- make the relationship go differently. Um, you know, it it's it's definitely difficult to get it off of your mind, so I like to try to stay busy. Yeah. And for me last the last breakup I went through was um it kind of sucked because it was during the holidays, right? Oh and I God, thought I was going to be on vacation. Every, all my friends were out of town, including you. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and um, I, you know, and so my holiday plans were kind of can't put on hold or... Um, you yeah, because you didn't know what you guys were going to do. Right. And that's also what sucks sometimes. It's like families are involved and... It's yeah, like, there, and there are tell? always plans, right, in a relationship. And then... You know, that's I think that's the hard part of a breakup is it's you know a, the the plans unravel like whatever you thought in your head was going to be happening in in that near future it's it's not right so how to push through it for me I was here in LA and even though LA is a nice place to be I it felt like a bit like a downer like oh I'm not abroad or I'm not you know somewhere doing super exciting things with my partner yeah so I tried to um I literally went online and was just like what are cool things to do in LA because you really want to stay busy because I I always find it that the most important thing is to not dwell in it we don't want to be constantly giving that energy right to what happened because we know as women I think we always think too much Right. And we want to analyze every single detail and every single text message. It's like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. It's like, did he really say that? Or, you know, oh, my God, is he liking that girl's picture on Instagram? (laughs) And you just want to, you know, you know, analyze everything. And and I I've also found it to be a little energy draining. Definitely. You know, when you what am I going to do? Stay busy. So what are some of the things that you did? So I I literally went online like as if I was a student of LA. You know, what are and I actually grew up here. I'm I'm born and raised in LA. Um, so you would think I would know, you know, what to do just off bat, but I think it's good and we talk about this a lot to get yourself out of your comfort zone. So I wanted it to be a discovery process, I guess. And I literally went online, like as if I was a tourist coming to LA, what are, um, you things know, attractions you in LA, things you can do, like leisure. Th- Different things. Right. So you want to do things that you don't normally do. Right. So for me... Um, Which is also really great because sometimes along the way you can meet new people. 
people that are completely different than right. than your friends and maybe than your ex. So mm-hmm. that's always really positive. Yeah. And even though I had, so for me, even though I had, I kind of tried to like uh, narrow, you know, hone in on in one area of of I guess like of an activity to do in LA and I chose hiking even though I've gone hiking in LA you know they're kind of like the the hikes that are more accessible right like Runyon and Griffith Park but I decided to try to look into the hikes that really feel more of an adventure like more of like an, an adventure. adventure yeah something that's like oh it takes an hour to get there and then you know it's it's not it's not just like some uh, some trail off of Sunset Boulevard. Would it's, you do these hikes alone? Um, no, I actually. Well, uh, that was the idea behind picking a hike because you can do it alone. You don't need to do it with someone. And since you know most of my friends are out of town, sounds so depressing. <laughs> but um, no, I ended up finding a friend for the hikes and or a different friend here and there. And then, um, but I you know I also want to say that. If you end up doing adventurous things alone, it's a okay. Yeah, it's actually I always find it exciting. You do that. You do I that do a lot. lot. <laughs> I do a lot of alone things. <laughs> <laughs> I travel alone. I do a lot of things that don't require people. Um, no, but I think it's okay. I think sometimes when we're going through a breakup, we we're afraid of being alone, mm-hmm. and I think it's. You know, you shouldn't be afraid of being alone. I think it's a relationship with yourself that you should always work on. And sometimes being alone is good. Definitely. You hear your own voice. Definitely. So you would go on these hikes. And what did you find interesting about doing something different than you normally did? Yeah, I think it was the discovery process, right? Which we get. I think a little bit more easier when we're going abroad, when we're like immersed in a new culture, in a new way of living, you know, in a new city, whatever it is, um, because we're so stimulated by just the fact that we have never seen what it is that's around us, right? And it was kind of the same way with these hikes, but it sounds really, it sounds really cheesy, but for me, it was also just. A, appreciating the beauty that was around me without having to leave LA as you know or go a long distance um and it's that like counting your blessings right yeah and you it was important for me when I was in a time when I was feeling down yeah definitely and you start thinking wow my problem might not be as big as I feel it is. Right. Because when we're going through a breakup, we always feel that the world is falling apart. Mm-hmm. But we, we got to know that it's going to keep getting better, that the world keeps moving. And it's up to us, right, to see how we have that outlook on For sure. the future weeks and the future months. So, okay, so rediscovering your city. Yeah, I always say that because it's like if you can't afford to travel, Mm -hmm. then try to rediscover your city. I personally love the idea of picking up a new hobby Mm -hmm. because it kind of goes with keeping your mind off of the X. Right. So if you get busy, you, you know, you're not thinking so much about the pain. Right. Now, I love the idea of picking a new hobby Uh, Because I always feel that sometimes there's always things that we wanted to do. Mm, While you're in the relationship. While we're in the relationship (laughs) and we never do because we are sometimes afraid Mm -hmm. of taking a risk. And sometimes we get too busy with what that other person wants to do. Right. So it's like, why not do it now? I know that when I experienced my last big breakup, I started uh, painting again, mm-hmm. and that was very soothing for me. Yeah, because I was I had a focus of certain things that I wanted to do, and and it was a nice little hobby. I would take my little charcoal and 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 start drawing, and it was nice. It was like my moment. I would have my glass of wine, and mm-hmm. and you know, and I still do it till this day. Um, what are some of the things that you did? Like any new hobbies? I so I kind of revisited 
an old hobby, I guess, um, photography. I, I took photography classes, you know, in high school so long ago. And so I guess, you know, I have the basics down, how to work in a black room and develop film. And I kind of, and still now I would love to, it's, it's a, it's a hobby you can take anywhere, right? And doing, you know, you can travel with it, you can have it in your everyday life. And so that's another thing. I wanted it to be like accessible, something I can pick up anytime. And, and it give you a goal. Yeah. And it's another, it's another thing to help, you know, it's like, I, I, for example, I took it on the hikes. I would take my camera on the hikes and then the hike had more purpose than just doing the hike. Oh, let me try and capture some really dope photos of, you know, the nature and the beauty that's surrounding me right now. And so then that was another thing to kind of keep my mind uh, off of it. Yeah. Um, so for me, photography, I, I did the same thing. I went out, I went to Aaron Brothers and got um, charcoal sketch pads and, and charcoal and just would sit down on my floor in my living room and just like, you know, get into it and get messy with my hands and start creating something, even if I didn't know what I was doing. Because I think um, both, you know, whatever hobby it is you pick up, you're learning a new hobby, right? But then you're also learning about yourself through that activity. You know, if it's if it was photography and I'm taking pictures of things, you know, I'm maybe I'm finding things that, that I'm interested in that I wasn't fully aware I was interested in before, like certain subject matters that I like to take pictures of. Oh, I like actually taking my camera out during this time of the day or... Um, and same thing with drawing. You know? I, I I actually, you know, something that also helped me a lot. Mm. I remember going on Facebook mm-hmm. and deleting all of our pictures. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I, I went through a really bad breakup, guys. She, she's like, let's get away from all this really <laughs> yeah, so, nice. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, you know, I needed to kind of clean house, mm-hmm. and I had been living with this person, so I, I really didn't want any memories. Any yeah. visible memories. And it was tough because I stayed living in the same place. So I used to always say, it's like his ghost is still here. He's still yeah. around me. But it is his energy. Is. His energy completely. Yeah. I, I, you know, I wash those sheets a million times and it's like <laughs> still. But I actually, so when I went on, um, when I went on uh, Facebook to delete our pictures because I didn't want any reminder mm-hmm. that I spent years with this man. We're by the way, guys. We are now friends. <laughs> All right, no I don't hate care. him. No one cares. That's boring, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't hate him anymore. But I was, you know, I was in a very distraught place, and I didn't want any any reminders of the love we had once shared. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to delete all our pictures, and I came across uh, a list on Facebook that I had made. A few years before I had even entered that relationship Mm -hmm. of certain goals I had. Mm -hmm. And it completely reminded me of, you know, of all the goals I had prior to establishing new goals in a relationship. Right. It reminded me, hey, I have to focus on myself. I Mm -hmm. have to really learn myself. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all so great, like when you travel, when you rediscover your city, because you're actually taking time to realize so many things that you wouldn't have necessarily paid attention to Mm -hmm. when you were in a relationship. Right. It's so important to really ask yourself questions of who am I? Like who, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Mm -hmm. What are my goals? And I started asking myself all those questions. And I've always been a very tenacious woman since well, since I was a young girl, I always sort of knew what I wanted to do with my life and my career. But after this breakup, I had to sit down and sort of reanalyze the the route I was going to take. Right. It's like okay, I'm I was kind of going this one road with this one person, mm-hmm. and things happened, and you know, change of plans. Now I have to sort of reroute myself and so what am I going to do next Mm -hmm. so I decided I'm going to accomplish all those goals that I had before I met him right I'm going to accomplish all the goals that I didn't get to um really 
uh, per, you know, that I wasn't in pursuit of mm-hmm. while I was in a relationship because I was focused on building my life with him. Right. So I decided, hey, I am going to publish my book that I've been wanting to publish. I know. I remember. For such a long time, I had attempted with two previous books, and I was like, you know what? This this is going to make me so happy. Right. And this is going to give me a sense of purpose. I think we always need to find a sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, f- for some people that are probably listening, maybe your sense of purpose is that you want to start a certain business. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to finish college. Maybe you want to learn a certain language that you've always had an affinity towards. What is it that would make you feel complete? Right. What is it that would make you feel, hey, I've accomplished something wonderful and I took a negative moment and I took a pain and I turned it into something of purpose. I turned it into something bigger than me. I turned it into something powerful. I turned it into something that my daughter, that my girlfriend, that my mom, that my dad, my brother could look at me and be like, wow, I'm really proud of you. Yeah. So sometimes it might not be a career choice, but it could also be a personal choice. Mm -hmm. You know, I know sometimes people decide to sometimes even take therapy Mm-hmm. I do after that. after a breakup, bec- yeah. and that helps their relationship with themselves. Right. They, you know, I feel like the most important thing is that we always need to strive to become a better version of ourselves. Right, and that's what you know relationships are for. Sometimes you think, oh, it ended so terribly. No, it doesn't end terribly. It, you know, it, it was meant to end that way because we were supposed to live that. Right. We were supposed to learn from it. And you, you know, you, like you were saying, you have the power to decide what you want to do with that experience, right? If you want to take it and make it a positive thing or... or if you want to drown in self-pity. Right. And it's actually, it should be so inspiring for people to know. And I kind of wanted, I wasn't going to share it. I was going to let you share it, you know, or I don't, I didn't know if you wanted to share it, that really a lo- your, your career as a poet and writer really was birthed. Go, while you were going through that breakup, I feel. Even though yeah. it was something you had been doing your yeah, whole life. Yeah, I had been doing it my entire life, but I was in such a rut that I was like, I, I wanted to get back to my art. I wanted to get back to the things that I was completely passionate for. Mm-hmm. And I decided I'm going to accomplish the goals that I had since I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. That I had been a little sidetracked because I was working on accomplishing his goals. Right. Which happens to so many of us. Right. That we start spending so much time with someone that we love and we forget about ourselves. Right. And, and you know, and it's okay. If it's happened, it's okay. So it's it's never too late to redirect the focus to ourselves for a bit. Exactly. And I think it's so important that we just acknowledge it. Definitely. And we have to acknowledge it. It's like, okay, this happened. Mm-hmm. So it's like you got to accept the breakup. Okay, the breakup happened. Now, how am I going to grow from it? How is this going to make me better instead of making me feel worse? So it's like, yeah, you could rediscover your city. That's always a good way to stay busy. Mm-hmm. To um, If you start a new hobby. I also find it really cool sometimes. It's like, why not even change your look? You want to start right. feeling really positive about yourself. Sometimes there's a look that you've always wanted to try and that you, you know, that that you maybe were a little afraid. I remember about three months into my breakup, mm-hmm. I highlighted my hair. <laughs> I went to Miami and, and my sister highlighted my hair. My sister's a cosmetologist mm-hmm. and she highlighted my hair. And, you know, and I kept it for maybe six months. And you know what? I liked it. Yeah. It was a change. What's the fastest way, right? And it's the fastest like- way. I didn't want to cut my hair. Yeah. So I changed the color and... Mm-hmm. It was something that I had been wanting to do for a long time, and it, and it was fun, mm-hmm. and it made me feel good. I also like the idea of working out. Right. Yeah, that's really important, especially just 
I mean, for just to keep your hair, uh, your hair, <laughs> your mind clear. <laughs> your, your mind clear. Right? I'm not saying like go and, you know, like start, you know, trying to like aim for a fitness competition. <laughs> right. You don't got to go all the way. But, you know, you want to take, maybe go for a run, a walk, mm-hmm. I don't know, go to the gym, a treadmill, et cetera. Yeah. Even if you can, you know, maybe yoga, Pilates, whatever it is. I, I remember I would uh, take sometimes uh, hot Pilates classes or mm-hmm. or um, bar method. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to promote them necessarily, but they were actually really great classes. Mm-hmm. But one of my teachers, one of the instructors, she used to always say at the end of class, this is your time. This is the time for yourself. Breathe, you know, and all that. Yes. And I remember feeling... So much lighter every time I attended, I went to one of uh, these classes. And I, to be honest, yeah, I felt like my butt was looking nicer, <laughs> but I was actually f- walking out of there feeling really great. Yeah. So, well, that's the thing. It makes us feel better taking care of ourselves, you know, eating healthier mm-hmm. because a lot of times what we eat. You know, sometimes it provokes like how proactive we are. For sure, are. your energy your levels. Your energy levels. It's like if you eat cleaner, you're going to think more clearly. Um, you're not going to feel as lazy to accomplish all those goals that you want to accomplish. Right. Um, what else do you think? I mean, I think it's just just going off of what you said, it's so important to be proactive about this stuff and be so conscious about it. That is a choice. Yeah. You've got to be conscious that it's a choice. Treat it like a job, you know, like treat taking care of yourself like a job. So you know schedule what? it in. If I, you don't I, have time, make time. I actually was having a conversation about this mm-hmm. yesterday. So many times we're told that relationships with our partner takes work, Mm -hmm. which it completely does. Mm -hmm. Anything that we want to work out, you Mm -hmm. know, takes work. So it's like it's like your career. It's like you went to college, Jamie, Mm -hmm. to be an attorney. Mm -hmm. So that took work, Mm -hmm. right? So why is it that so many people feel, or actually I feel that they don't have the knowledge Mm -hmm. to understand that the relationship with ourselves should also take work. Right. For sure. I mean, I read something the other day that made a lot of sense to me. It was just happiness is synthetic. Like it's not Mm -hmm. naturally occurring. You have to form like habits to keep that sense of happiness going, right? So healthy forming habits like working out and... It takes discipline. It takes discipline, right. So if you just drop all of that and then... You can't be so surprised to wonder, why don't I feel good today? Why don't I feel good this week? Why am I in this slump? You know, think about what you've been doing within the week. Maybe it's, there's definitely a correlation. Um, And when I was thinking, when we were talking about ways to get over a breakup, you know, over the weekend, I was kind of going over these things in my head and I brought it up to my boyfriend and he was like, oh, what are you guys going to talk about on your first podcast? And I was like, no, wait. (laughs) You're like, oh, I'm going to talk about the guy before you. <laughs> but I, I think he was thinking we were going to say, go out and hook up with someone right away and go sleep with someone to get your mind off, you know, like revenge stories, like how to get over a breakup, how to get back at Yeah, him. you know, a lot, I, of, a lot of times I think so many of us have made that mistake. Because right. I myself, I've made that mistake of... You know, going out too much and drinking too much and maybe doing stupid things along the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it, we've all done that. But you know, it always left me empty. It always left me waking up with a hangover and feeling really shitty. For sure. And I didn't want to feel like that. I wanted to feel strong. I wanted to feel powerful. You know, especially having to see how someone else was moving on maybe better than me. Right. So for me, I feel that that doesn't work. The whole hooking up with someone new all the time. And, I don't think it works the, for anyone. No. And sometimes people move on. They, they think that getting into a new relationship right away is going to help them. And mm-hmm. sometimes the, the rebound situation 
doesn't necessarily work either. You're just prolonging. You're prolonging what you have to do, the work right. with yourself. Right. Um, so that's really important. And I, and I wish that, not I wish because, you know, it's, it's a growing process. But if I had known these things, you know, when I was younger, I really only realized this stuff maybe going through my last breakup. Um, just to be so proactive about it in a positive way instead of, you know, the Trying ways... to put a Band-Aid. Right. The ways, like, that are just the, easy. The it's easier to do that. It's easier to just, like, go out to a club with your friends. And it's easier to just go drinking. And it's easier to just sleep in and do nothing all day and eat garbage, right? And and I'm not and saying and don't cream. ever do that stuff. <laughs> but it's definitely Sometimes it's nice, guys. Yeah. Sometimes maybe a couple of days here. And sometimes there. it's nice. Sometimes all you want is is some pizza. <laughs> pizza fixes everything. When I'm when I'm feeling down, I'm like, oh I wish I could have some pizza and then I kinda of stop myself and I'm like, do you really want to? <laughs> no. Actually I think the best you want, the time after the breakup, that's when you want to look the best. For I, sure. I am that girl. I am like, I want to look so good that if I were to ever run into this man. Run into him, his right. friends. The new chick. Right. I'm like, when, and once I get there, I'm like, please, can I just run into somebody so yes. they can see how good I'm so doing? <laughs> how good I'm doing, of course. And it's, you know, it, I, I don't find anything wrong with that. I feel it's... Good. As a woman, you want to look good. You want to feel good. You want to feel good, whatever that may be. Like for me, it was, hey, I was taking my, I was taking care of myself so much better. I was eating better. I was working out, and I changed my look, and that made me feel better. Um, so everybody has a different way of how to feel that they move on from a breakup. Right. But I know those are certainly five ways mm -hmm. that helped me. Mm -hmm. And I know that they helped you. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that what we should always strive to overall is establish that relationship with ourselves, learning ourselves. Right. That creates confidence. And understand that in the end, it's a learning process that we can't beat ourselves over what happened in the past, mm -hmm. we have to move forward mm -hmm. and try to take our the lessons from that past relationship and try to apply those lessons to the next one. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that even though these are, you know, tips for how to get over a breakup, they're also just tips even if you're in a relationship. Yeah. You um, can't lose yourself when you walk into the next relationship. Right. So even if you're in a relationship and, and I think the more, you feel I think another thing is like you got to stay in a positive environment. For sure. S stay around positive people that remind you how how amazing you are. Right. You don't want Debbie Downers around you. Yeah, you want a good support system. You know, you want to be around your real friends. You want to laugh. You want to be reminded that you, in the end, okay, you're you're not with that person you loved, but... You have your entire life ahead mm -hmm. and that you can be happy again. You can find love again. That's the, the wonderful thing. You can always find love again. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. Right. And I don't to believe that. Right. And we're telling you it's possible because I don't think you realize that when you're going through your first breakup At or all. your second you're not, one even. Um, you feel like the world is crumbling, but it is possible. You find love again. Love will find you again if you believe it. So that's sort of like, it was like, uh, felt like a little boot camp you went through, Jamie. It was. A healing boot camp. And that's kind of how I like to look at it. I mean, I'm very intense in everything I'm, I do. I'm, a, what am I, Scorpio rising? <laughs> and um, so I'm, I'm, you know, if I, you have to set your mind out to it and be very proactive about it. And like I said, kind of treat yourself like a job. It takes work. It takes effort. Um, and um, it, it was definitely a little mini boot camp for me, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, it was so nice chatting. Our first podcast, How to Get Over a Breakup. I mentioned these pointers on my latina.com column. And remember that you can find my books on Amazon, Letters to the Men I Have Loved and Elusive Loves. 
And hopefully very soon you will be able to read my next book, Letters to Women Like Me. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for, well, thank you for, this is our first podcast. Podcast, so yeah, for being part of this. I really hope everyone enjoyed it. And we will be back.